Hey everyone, welcome to Duality Repair. Tonight I'm going to be reviewing this Cronova MS8233D multimeter. This is a nice auto ranging multimeter and it's a really good price for everything that you get. So let's take a quick look around. It's a really compact unit, fits in your hand really nicely. It's got a nice bright orange case and everything is clearly labeled on the front. The back's got the standard battery compartment and it's got a 9 volt battery that it comes with. It's got the two uh, probe lead holders there, which is nice. And then, of course, it's got the uh, kickstand. So you can set it there when you're doing your work. And we'll go around the dial here. Obviously, we have our off down here. Measures DC voltage, AC voltage, resistance. Uh, it'll check your diodes and continuity uh, with an audible beep, which we'll check later. It checks frequency, which I haven't uh, checked yet. Uh, it can measure... Uh, current in microamps, milliamps, and amps in the uh, AC region. And then, of course, you got your off. So, a couple nice things about this it's got a really nice, solid uh, turn. You can hear it click. It also tells you when it's ready to measure um, in that set point by an audible beep. So, that's pretty nice. It's got this function switch. Really, this is just used for the diode continuity. Uh, you can see it starts in the uh, diode mode if you press function, goes to continuity mode, and then function brings it back to diode mode. It's got the hold function, which allows you to hold at the voltage that you're measuring at, the max function, which allows you to measure and hold the uh, highest value, and it's got this nice, really nice, really bright um, screen here. So the only downfall that I've seen so far with this is that at a certain angle you cannot see the screen with that backlight on. The backlight off, you can see it. I know you can't see it on camera very well, but you can see this from any angle with the backlight off. With the backlight on, I can see it in this angle. Left to right, it looks pretty good, but when you're angling it like this, so from looking from top down, that uh, kind of drowns out, that backlight kind of drowns out your LCD screen. So that's a little bit of a negative, but really it's not a big deal. And this this is a really nice uh, light, really nice feature. I've already used this. Um, as far as uh, cosmetically, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a really nice little compact meter. And um, the other nice thing about this meter is it comes with a lot of stuff. So it comes with your standard probes. Should have these ready, obviously. Your standard probes, right, for measurement. It's got the uh, probe covers on there right now. Standard probes. Another nice thing, it comes with these uh, second probes with alligator clips on the end. So if you don't feel like probing, if you just want to clip onto something, say ground, chassis ground, and then you want to probe with your other probe, uh, it allows you to do that. That's really nice. It, of course, comes with the instruction manual. And I flipped through it a little bit. The instructions actually look... Um, pretty thorough and readable and it comes in multiple languages so this is really nice and it even comes with a nice zipped up carrying case with a little uh, lined pocket in there you can put your meter in there you can put everything in there and it's really it's really small so you can see it's basically the size of my hand so all of this stuff fits in there and uh, the best part this is twenty dollars this is a twenty dollar meter from Amazon unbelievable I got this thing delivered uh, less than 48 hours for free. Less than 48 hours after I ordered it. $20 on Amazon. Amazon, great deal. So that's uh, that's the overview. Uh, let's go ahead and test at least some of the functions here. All right, first test, we'll test the DC voltage measurement. So I have the meter hooked up to my DC power supply. I'm going to go ahead and start increasing the voltage. We'll see if it tracks. So I'll just stop at uh, maybe 10 volt increments. At least start there. So here we go, we have 10 volts on my uh, power supply, and I have 10.11 volts on my meter. Now bear in mind, this power supply is not calibrated, so this looks pretty good up to 10 volts. Let's go up to 20. Twenty point one, also, 0 0.1 volts off, good. Let's jump up to 50 volts.
50.2 looks good and I'll change ranges here and I'll go up to say 100 volts and 100.3 so it looks fantastic all the way to up to 100 volts DC I have the meter hooked up to a, my AC outlet and it's reading 120.6 volts AC so I'd say that checks out let's move on to resistance I have the meter hooked up to an 8 ohm resistor and as you can see it's reading exactly 8.0 ohms fantastic let's move on to diode and continuity let's check the diode function I have a standard diode in front of me with one orientation we should read open and with the other we should read between 0.6 and 0.7 volts so here we go alright open in that direction let's switch the leads around we should read between 0.6 and 0.7 volts there we go 674 millivolts perfect diode function works perfectly let's go ahead and check the continuity function while we're here again <clears throat> I'll keep the uh, dial on the diode continuity uh, switch and we'll just press the function button you'll see it and hear it switch over to the continuity and we'll just check continuity of this small little cable here and here we go here we go here we are in frequency mode this supposedly can test up to 20 kilohertz so we'll go ahead and start with uh, one kilohertz I have the meter hooked up to the headphone jack of my computer and I'll just play a few test tones through uh, YouTube. So here we go. Here's one kilohertz. All right, and it's reading 0.998 kilohertz. That's good. Let's go to two kilohertz. Two kilohertz is reading 1.996 kilohertz. Great. And one more. Let's try 10 kilohertz, right in the middle of the range. Ten kilohertz is reading nine point nine eight kilohertz. Wow! All right, here we are back at the DC power supply. We'll go ahead and check the milliamp function first. Uh, I don't think my power supply is sensitive enough to be able to output in the microamp range, so we're going to test milliamp and amp. We'll start with the milliamp. I have the power supply uh, constant current set to one hundred milliamps, so the power supply will not output more than one hundred. This uh, input on this meter can only uh, withstand 250 milliamps so I will not uh, get anywhere close to that limit so let's go ahead and test it out crank up the voltage you can see we have about 100 milliamps on the power supply and we're reading 100.4 milliamps on the meter pretty good all right let's test amps I move the probe to the 10 amp input and I've changed my constant current set point on the power supply to 500 milliamps or half an amp that's the highest that this power supply can output so let's go ahead and crank it all the way up and see what we read So the power supply reads 493 milliamps and the meter is reading 0.51 amps or 510 milliamps. Pretty good. All right, to wrap up, I really like this thing. It's, uh, it's really compact. It's easy to hold. It's easy to use. Uh, you get all these functions with it. All the functions work really well. You get all the extras too, like the uh, carrying case. You get, of course, the instruction manual. And you get an extra set of leads with the alligator clips. You get the 9-volt battery to get started. Uh, this thing is just really nice and 20 bucks on top of that so really just a great value go ahead and pick yourself up one of these if you're in need of an inexpensive reliable meter thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one